I'm Carl Moberg. I'm the CTO with Avassa. I brought with me my field engineer deluxe, Fredrik Jansson. So really brief about ourselves. We're a Swedish company. How exotic is that, huh? Uh, we were founded in 2020. Uh, we, of course, work on a global scale. We do software only. We've had the priv privilege to be somewhat recognized. We now have representation both in North America where much of the cool stuff is going on in the edge environment, uh, but most of our engineering and our leadership is out of Stockholm, Sweden. So as soon as you guys have an opportunity to visit us, give me a, a, a ping and I'll show you around. So Avasa, just a brief introduction. So with a background in the team around automation and orchestration, some of you may have seen some of us inside of a company called TailF Systems, where we did infrastructure monitoring and orchestration and, 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 um, or, and automation. We have moved along and we have found that there are other domains to automate and orchestrate. And we have found a very interesting user persona, and we're gonna introduce you to two user personas in this presentation. We're gonna start with this gentleman here. He will eventually get a name, but right now he's more of an IT and platform team kind of guy. Uh, He's being tasked on for building an actual infrastructure for Edge. And that turns out to be a very interesting career move for some of these people, because they quickly realize that the pressure is on. And majority of the pressure actually comes from three directions. It's our observability or, or our observation this far. It comes from the CIO. I mean, uptime is a core at the core or the heart of why people want to run things at the edge. So you better have better uptime than in your centralized environments. Of course, you have a CISO that is worried that the physical availability of your compute platforms may adversely affect your ability to keep secrets in general and sensitive material where they should belong. And maybe a little less talked about is that there is a lot of pressure from the application teams to make the edge environment a comfortable one, an ergonomic one, not one you have to swivel chair into or rebuild your applications for. So we're gonna actually focus on these three pressure points. They're not the only ones, but they're the ones we perceive to be pretty heavy on the IT and platform team. And actually the two people that we are going to introduce and use here, uh, we're trying to keep this of course technical, but also in context. And the context that we usually find ourselves in consists of two types. On the right, we have Patrick McEngine. Uh, hopefully the whole industry will start calling that person Patrick from, from now on. He is a platform engineer. So he loves to plan, design, and configure infrastructure. He also operates the infrastructure and he's super passionate about infrastructure. What's important too to understand is that Patrick at his heart is an enabler for our left team member, which is Applifair developees. It takes a couple of times to say that, yes. So and I, I can do, do that now almost without stumbling. Applifer loves computer programs. That's what she does. She designs and produces computer programs. Passionate about the application layer, less passionate about infrastructure, but she drives the value stream. And this is true in most enterprises. Her bits and bytes are a little closer to what the company does than maybe what the infrastructure is, at least if you stay out of the service provider business and focus on the enterprise side of things. So these are the two people that will frame our conversation and we'll follow those as they embark a little bit on an edge adventure, so to speak. I had threatened Stephen to make this into a episode of Rick and Morty, but uh, I, you know, the, the look he gave me was uh, one that, that, you know, maybe not do that. But these are our protagonists and we will follow them through this presentation here. Okay, so usually just to get this out of the way, what do we actually do before I keep, keep with the fluff? So we have an application management and operations platform for on-site edge. And I've learned to front load this because of course, I don't wanna go through what is the edge and why is the edge important while I have precious time with you guys. The one thing that I wanna point out is that the assumption here is that the edge is owned by whomever is using it. So think of retailers, think of industrial shop floors, think of quick serve restaurants that you love. Think of things that, you know, you own the infrastructure. So don't think about Stackpath. Don't think about Cloudflare or AWS regions. Think about on-site or on-prem edge environments. Here's what we find. Talking to a lot of enterprises before we embarked on actually forming a company out of 
Switzerland or Sweden or wherever it is. We were talking to a lot of platform and IT teams that really had their current set of IT down pat, which is usually on site for users. It's usually maybe some private cloud, maybe some public cloud. They were now asked to extend their capabilities to either build or take over infrastructure running at on site edges. To their horror, many of the tools that they were using for their current infrastructure simply didn't work for a couple of reasons. But just to make it even worse, we started talking to application teams that were either shifting some workloads from the centralized environment to the edge, or again, assuming control over distributed applications. Particularly the application teams had gone through a very long, arduous journey to the cloud, right? So they had reorganized themselves, recultured themselves, retooled themselves, and they were pretty proud of the agility they had for the public cloud. And then we found a retailer that could deploy new applications into the cloud in less than two hours, but they still had to send USB sticks to each and every retail outlet for, for the, to the tune of $2,000 per version and year, or version or lo and location, which capped them at twice a year. And we saw that this is a pretty horrible tooling void for, again, for applications running on their on-site edge. There's, there was almost no reuse of their CICD-centric environment, and there was no, almost no reuse of the IT and platform team's tool set. And with our background in distributed systems, automation and orchestration, we thought, let's do something about that. So we've built two pieces of software, and this is just a build up to the demo. This is just a build up. I want to give you the outline of what we're doing. We have one piece of software that's centralized. It's called the control tower, because that is easy to understand. We have a second piece that is called the edge enforcer. The Edge Enforcer is something you install on your usually Linux hosts running on your on-site edge, either on bare metal or, as you will eventually see here, um, using some really interesting distributed tools like Scale's Fleet Manager. You can you know, bring that up on whatever flexible infrastructure you already have in place. But the Edge Enforcer is key to us because it calls home to the control tower. It tells the control tower about the environment that it sees. And after that, you can now start deploying applications while monitoring the IT infrastructure from the control tower. Is the control tower SaaS delivered or self-hosted or can be both? We prefer SaaS delivered. Yep. We already have a small set of users that are threatening us with saying we probably can't consume this kind yep. of thing. But we shall see. The classic SaaS journey. Mm. Yes, <laughs> yes. But when they see how straightforward it is, I won't say easy, but how, mo how more straightforward it is, they usually kind of kind of try to go back. So a surprising amount of SaaS first. Yep. Right. Which I it's 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 courageous of them, I have to say. You know, it's a pretty core part of, of their application lifecycle. But it's it seems okay with most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Just off, out of curiosity, sure. Are these companies, you know, opting for their on prem solution, just big companies? Do they have any data governance or, you know, exactly. concerns? Exactly. Mm. Certain verticals. Uh, actually some of the service providers are still not comfortable with doing this, particularly, and we'll get to some of this, if they have multi-tenancy and they have third-party tenants on, on top of the infrastructure, they at times will have to prove that they are the owner of the infrastructure. So it's usually non-technical reasons. It's usually, like you said, okay. law or That's what regulation. For me. Thank, you. Thank you for opening the, the questions. Appreciate Someone that. Someone had to do it. First question at Edge Field Day ever. <laughs> That's a good one. Love it. All right. Just really brief, Control Tower does a whole lot of things. I won't go through this in detail because we will show it in the, uh, in the demo, but in general, of course, it provides the features you need in terms of managing a fleet of infrastructure. So it has to do with sites, it has to do with applications that you de deploy and monitor and observe, and of course, event streaming and all kinds of supportive stuff. And the Edge Enforcer also does a lot of stuff. It manages local clusters, at the heart of it is, of course, a pretty sophisticated um, application scheduling mechanism, but also things like event streaming, secrets management, and other things that must be produced at the edge because we want to be resilient for upstream outages. The demo will focus on the web UI. You have to trust me when I say that we have the holy trio. It's now a trio of a command line interface, a REST API, and a web UI. I love my terminal too, but I think it will be faster and more convenient to do this um, in the web UI. 
going back to the infrastructure piece yeah. of it on the edge side. Sure. Is what are are you going to talk about what the requirements for that are? Can they, they does it need to be what it needs to be for it to land for your? I am now. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> we assume that all our users have their favorite compute node with their favorite Linux on it, and then it's a one line installer, and Frederick will actually show that. Okay. But we assume some sort of compute nodes with Linux on it, and off you go. And then um, uh, uh, this might be one. I'm going to wait to go. see what you're going to show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, I have that a question about your holy trinity. Sure. Uh, so an, an API is wonderful, but do you have SDKs for popular development languages and automation tools? We do have for Python and Rust at the moment. Right. So Python would then allow me to, to drive this from something like Ansible if, if that was yeah. chosen. Or, or maybe from GitHub. Mm. Maybe. Maybe that's part of what's coming up. Yeah. Coming up <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes to that, of course. Oh, there's so many things to talk about, Stephen. Anyway, so the demo setup that we're working our way towards here has 50 sites. What we mean by site is usually location. Each site has a single host, and Frederick is going to build for us an additional site with three hosts. Okay, so he's going to set that up for us. We have a single site provider. So someone's actually, let's say, the root super admin account that can see all the technical details about the infrastructure. And then we have an application team, someone who's not privy to the minute details, but are interested in pushing applications onto the infrastructure. So those are the two users we're going to use here. 